Coming up on 7 News today, we will give you an update on H1N1 flu here at Northwestern. Plus, on today's Campus Watch, Sing Sing Lee will show you five ways to save on your grocery shopping. Also, a college survival cooking lesson is hosted here in Alva. We will show you how you can get involved. These stories and more, keep it here. 7 News starts now. Broadcasting from the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State University, bringing you the area's latest news and sports, this is 7 News. Hello and thank you for choosing 7 News today. I'm Ashton Gaming. And I'm Austin Sterling. Our top story today focuses on the H1N1 flu outbreak. 7 News talked to University Relations Stephen Valencia, and as for now, there have not been any confirmed cases here at Northwestern. However, many students are reporting illness that have flu-like symptoms. Students are encouraged to wash their hands frequently and clean their room in order to prevent themselves from getting infected. This past week, students had a chance to learn the ins and outs of the kitchen in the workshop called College Survival. 7 News reporter Joe Perez was there to learn how it was all made. For many students, having a home-cooked meal is something that you usually go home for or go to a fine dining. But what about for the students that actually have a stove and a microwave and the capability of cooking? Surviving College is a course that teaches the students just that. Tired of the freshman 15, but think it's hard to make a decent meal without a living cook? Not Brenda Hood and Kathy Ernest, who are on a mission to help students survive college by filling their bellies one stomach at a time. So what was the recipe that sparked this crusade? I came up with the idea simply because of my own kids. They're in college, but Kathy and I are on evangelism together and decided to do it here. College kids here. Well, I think our idea was to get together and have a good time, eating always causes people to have a good time. But mostly we wanted to um, try to come up with some recipes that college students could make that were easy and nutritious, but also to help them <laughs> develop a few cooking skills along the way. And we prepared Sloppy Joes. The ingredients include a two pound of hamburger, chicken gumbo soup, uh, uh, one tablespoon of ketchup, a tablespoon of mustard, and salt and pepper. It's really good. Please come join us on the 7th <coughs> of October at 6 o'clock. Yum, yum. I'm Laura Chapman. I'm Amber Gilchrist. And these are our crispy treats. Not everyone who attended this workshop are incapable of making a meal. Some just came to enjoy the company and perhaps learn a new recipe or two. Um, to have fun and cook because I love cooking and I'm up for learning new ideas of recipes and how to cook things and everyone always has a different cooking style. So. Concluding the kitchen session, the students not only got to make the food, but they also got to eat it, too. And some of the entrees that the students prepared was Sloppy Joes and deviled eggs, as well as some special treats, such as peanut butter rice crispy treats. For Channel 7 News, I'm Joe Perez. Back to you at the desk. Another workshop will take place on Wednesday, October 7th at 6 p.m. It is not easy to support yourself through college. This week's 7 News reporter Sing Sing Lu will help you survive college by showing you five ways to save on your grocery bill on today's Campus Watch. Well, as college students, you have a lot of bills to pay, and maybe it's time now to start saving on your grocery shopping. First of all, you want to make a list before you go. It's important to plan ahead so you don't just grab everything you see, and most importantly, stick with your list. A list is a good thing to have whenever you go shopping because it allows you to have an idea of what you need and then you won't have any random shopping going on and then you won't spend as more money than what you anticipated on spending. Well, the second rule is you don't want to go shopping when you're hungry because you might just end up buying this junk food that you don't really need. I do think when I go grocery shopping and I'm hungry, I do buy more junk food. The third way is to bring your calculator with you or use your calculator in your cell phone. This way you can keep track of how much money you're spending. The fourth way is to stay away from the prepackaged items. 
It's good to have some green in your meal, but look at these pre-packaged lettuce. They can be as expensive as over $2, and the fresh ones over there can be a lot cheaper. Last but not least, make sure you give yourself a time limit. This way you don't spend much time looking around and buying stuff that's not on your list. Well, I hope these tips today will help you save some money next time when you go grocery shopping. For Canvas Watch, I'm Xing Xing Liu. Back to the studio. Thank you, Xing Xing. Another way to trim your grocery bill is to use the leftovers and always think twice before you decide if something is necessary for you. The 2009 Fall Blood Drive will be held from 9 to 4 on October 7th and 8th in the Student Center. This year, every donor will receive a free t-shirt, bonus points in participation classes, and free sandwiches from Chartwell's Catering. Also, donors will receive free health screenings and Members for Life points to redeem at OBI's online store. For more information, call OBI's toll-free number at 877-340-8777. The planning process for the pa pageant has already started. The Miss Northwestern pageant's theme this year is the Lights of Paris and will take place at 2 o'clock Sunday, January 24th in Harrod Hall. The new Miss Northwestern will compete in the 2010 Miss Oklahoma pageant in June. Director of the Miss Northwestern pageant, Amanda Schroeder, explains why you should participate. The Miss Northwestern scholarship pageant is just that, a scholarship pageant. Every person who participates is going to receive a $200 cash scholarship. The winner will receive a $1,500 tuition waiver and an additional $500 in cash scholarships. Who wouldn't want to participate, especially now when tuition costs are on the rise and everyone is having a hard time making ends meet? Um, our prize packages are amazing. I can't disclose everything that we've got going on right now, but I can tell you that last year, our winner received a $500 teeth whitening package from New Image Dental Care, courtesy of Dr. Jeffrey Pierce, along with hundreds of other dollars in gift certificates and gifts from various local businesses. It's going to be great, but you can only take part in it if you sign up. Schroeder says the deadline to enter the Miss Northwestern pageant is October 16th. Being sick and away from home is not a good thing. Coming up on 7 News, we will tell you two options that will help you with this problem. Also, this year's homecoming is just around the corner. We'll give you an update on what's going on. Keep it here. We'll be right back. You're watching 7 News, the number one collegiate newscast in Oklahoma. With Ashton, Austin, and Becky. This is 7 News. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. kind of have that ADD thing to where I can't really pay attention that well. I might as well just drop out. So I bounced from like foster home to foster home. Dropped out of high school my junior year. I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. They join gangs, start doing drugs, try to sell drugs. It distracts you from everything around you. You're always having to watch your back. You can't really be yourself. The one person who really got me to go back into school was my mom, my mother. 
My parents were the people that helped me the most. I need them to know that it really does help me that they're there for me. It's a new day. Today. Tell me what's been going on. Thank you for choosing 7 News Today. I'm Ashton Gamey. And I'm Austin Sterling. Make it last, make it last. Welcome back. The Safety Suit Concert will be held on October 8th at 6 p.m. here in Percival Fieldhouse. The winners of the 300 free tickets have been selected, and if you are one of the lucky winners, don't forget to pick up your ticket at the business office. For those who didn't win a free ticket, you can purchase them at the Northwestern Bookstore. Check out Safety Suits Music at www.safetysuitmusic.com. Theater production, Vietnam 101, The War on Campus, will be held at Herod Hall Auditorium this Thursday and Friday at 7.30 p.m. and on Saturday, October 3rd at 2 p.m. The production is based on 100 interviews of college students who attended o Oberlin College and Music Conservatory during the 1960s and early 1970s. The play deals with the civil rights, women's rights, pro and anti-war sentiments. However, it mostly focuses on the confusion that our country and college students were feeling at that time. It is considered somewhat of like a reader's theater piece or a presentational piece. We aren't using actual props, but we will be wearing actual costumes. And I think you should just come and see it. I think you'll like what you see. According to the director of the play, Kimberly Wiest, over 35 students are involved in the production. Tickets will be $5 for faculty and staff, $3 for students with ID, and $6 for general, general public. It seems like the fall semester has just started, but homecoming is already less than a month away. This week-long event will have the same traditional activities as well as some new attractions. Homecoming week is a time for students to represent their organizations around campus, but most of all to show their school spirit. There are many events planned for the week-long festivity for students to attend and show some Ranger pride. We'll have a bonfire. Um, we'll have a student faculty powder puff game. We'll have a movie night out on the lawn in front of the Walton Center. Other traditional events such as the homecoming parade Saturday morning and the Miss Cinderella pageant will also take place. A pep rally will be held on Friday on the front lawn where students are encouraged to rally around the ranger. Associate Vice President for University Relations, Stephen Valencia, is in his first year as a chair of the Homecoming Committee, and he will bring some new but familiar events to Homecoming Week. Some of the things that we're going to try to do different this year is really put a focus on trying to bring alumni back and giving them more things to do. We have a couple of alumni reunions planned for Friday night. Uh, we're reviving the tradition, really, of an alumni dance on Saturday night after the football game. So what we're hoping to do is get more alumni to come to the homecoming event and also get them to stay here for a longer time. The uh, dance will be at the uh, Merchants Building uh, at the Woods County Fairground. We've booked the uh, band Trader Price to come in and perform for that. We'll begin ticket sales for that event uh, on October 1st. Students are encouraged to participate in all the homecoming activities leading up to the game and can even help contribute right away. The biggest way that students can get involved would be voting for Ranger Royalty. Students can begin voting for Ranger Royalty next Monday. Students and faculty as well as members of the community can purchase homecoming buttons for $10 beginning on October 5th. These buttons help fund the homecoming events and also provide admission to the Miss Cinderella pageant and the football. In more health news, being sick and away from home is not fun, especially when your family physician is not in Alva. But you have two options that could help you and not break you. You're sick. You call every physician in town, but they are booked until tomorrow. What do you do? Option one, you run to the Northwestern Clinic at Share Medical Center. If you've got uh, any kind of student with any kind of communicable disease or, or illness, um, the quicker they can get that taken care of, the better in order to prevent it from spreading throughout classrooms and dorm rooms and, and, and that sort of thing. Kelly Parker, Director of Marketing at Share Medical Center, says the clinic started on Northwestern's campus in 2002, but was later moved to the hospital. It's an arrangement that the university needed to have in order to make sure that their students stayed healthy. 
Um, they had an option somewhere to go to um, that, uh, you know, because most students don't have an established physician in town, if, especially if they're coming from out of town. The Northwestern Clinic is free and open to Northwestern students. You must present a current Northwestern ID at sign-in. The clinic is open from 2 to 3 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but Parker says that not everything will be covered under the Northwestern Free Clinic. If it's very extensive and it's going to require a lot of uh, lab or, or radiology workup, then uh, that's not included in the free um, aspect of it for the students, but it, it, will, it can be provided um, and just then it becomes a responsibility of the student at that point. Option two, the urgent care clinic. This clinic starts at $65, but like the Northwestern Clinic, other costs outside of the basic treatment are the patient's responsibility. The urgent care clinic is, a, is an 8 to 5 clinic, um, Monday through Friday, and it's for people that aren't having an emergency situation. Parker explains why it is important not to rely on the urgent care clinic as your main medical source. If you see your doctor, if you establish with a doctor, you're going to see the same doctor every time. And, and that is just better because they become knowledgeable of you and your, your specific medical history and, and different things about you that could impact your care that might get uh, you know, lost in between different practitioners. With these two medical options, hopefully you can leave the clinic with your body and your bank account feeling a little bit better also says that flu shots, birth control, and sexually transmitted disease tests are not available for free under the Northwestern Clinic, but they are available at the health department. Coming up next, Becky is in with the latest Ranger Rodeo, soccer, golf, and football games. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Severe droughts. Tick, 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 Devastating, devastating hurricanes. Tick, 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 tick. Our future is up. Tick, tick, to you. Tick. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, David. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. The work was so hard. It was just going fast, fast, fast. I got kicked out of school and nobody cared about me, so I don't care. I sort of got messed up into gangs and other stuff. School was very difficult. I was expelled from school. I mean, the one person who really got me to go back into school was my friend Kevin. At my friend's graduation, I'm going to be the loudest one there. Because if you don't have anybody while you're in school, then there's not really a way to get through it. Choosing seven news today. I'm Ashton Gamey. And I'm Austin Sterling. Make it last, make it last. It's a new day all over. It's a new day. Today. It's a new day. Today. And now, seven news sports with Becky Burke. Welcome back. Northwestern's women's rodeo team has had a great start to the season, but both teams are ready to prove that they are number one. You may think the Ranger football team is big, but Northwestern's rodeo team is larger. We have about 130 members, 110 card holders. Northwestern will host their own rodeo on November 5th 
through the 7th. Graduate assistants and they were doing an excellent job. We'll be ready. I think this is probably the best team we've had since I've been here now 11 years. Although it is too early to tell about college finals, Coach Kolb hopes things go well. Proud of them. We lost some outstanding student athletes last year, but we brought in some recruits that are really filling the gap and stepping up as leaders. Team pride comes from both Coach Kolb and the students. I think it's a great program. I think we have a lot of a lot of talent, a lot of ability, and we'll do we'll do good and make make the Rangers proud. I think we got a really strong rodeo team. We ended up second in the region last year, and we didn't lose any boys from our men's team, and I, I think we're going to be the team to beat. The atmosphere at the arena is both friendly and welcoming. The, the team atmosphere is a lot of people. Uh, I actually like that. Some people don't. I really do. The more people there is, the more fun you're going to have, and more more friendships and everything else you can get with that. Um, just getting to practice with the guys, I mean, just spending time with your friends, I mean, doing what you like to do, I mean, it's a lot of fun, I really enjoy it. Team members do enjoy their good times at the arena, but it's not all about fun and games. It does take time and effort. I spend a lot out here. We, uh, between just riding to get our horses in shape and doing chores and, and actually practicing, I'd say probably four hours a day out here at least. I mean, we're out here at least four nights a week, I mean, at least that. And I mean, then you figure the time we put in exercising our horses and stuff, I mean, it's it's a seven day a week job, but it's a lot of fun too. After all of the hard work and practice, Northwestern Rodeo hopes to have a great season. The rodeo team will head to Pratt, Kansas on October 2nd through the 4th for the Pratt Community College Rodeo. Northwestern soccer team faced off against Bethany College on Thursday, where they were defeated 2-0. Bethany College scored their first goal five minutes after halftime. With nine minutes to go in the game, the Swedes scored another goal. Northwestern did take two more shots than Bethany, shooting 15 times with seven shots on goal. Bethany College took 13 shots and posted six on goal. Kelsey Archer picked up four saves. The Rangers picked up again on Saturday afternoon, this time to face off against Sterling College. Northwestern made an appearance on the scoreboard at 24-28 in the game when Catherine Montez scored an unassisted goal. Sterling followed with two second-half goals, putting the Rangers down by two. On Wednesday, September 30th, Northwestern will host their first Sooner Athletic Conference game at 4 p.m. at the Alva Recreational Complex. The Ranger golf team brought home a seventh-place finish over the weekend. Northwestern traveled to Winfield, Kansas to participate in the South Central Fall Invitational. The team scored a total of 648 for both days. The Rangers shot a 332 on Monday and improved their score to a 316 on Tuesday. Chad Kunkel led the Rangers with a 159, which placed him at 24th overall. Olaf Tun Tunder followed close behind at 27th place with a 161. Jay Lee, whom tied, whom tied for 40th, shot a 164, and Bryant Briggs, who placed for 43rd, shot a 165, respectively. Ty Billy shot 171, and Jesse Buzzard shot a 176, which rounded up the Rangers' scores. The Rangers will travel to Kansas City, Kansas, where they will conclude their fall play by participating in the Blue Devil Fall Golf Classic on October 12th through the 13th. This past Saturday, the Ranger football team traveled to Durant to face off against Southeastern Oklahoma State University. The first score did not come until 25 minutes into the game, when Southeastern returned a punt 76 yards, putting the score at 6-0 after a blocked kick. Southeastern struck again just two and a half minutes later on a short drive ending in a 49-yard touchdown run. Southeastern came out full force after halftime, only to extend the lead to 13-0 with a 36-yard field goal in the third quarter. The Rangers finally got on the scoreboard with their longest drive of the, end of the game, ending in a 17-yard toss to Mike Hill from quarterback Kyle Yett. In the fourth quarter, Northwestern inched closer with a 26-yard field goal from A.J. Gibson, putting the Rangers down by seven. But it wasn't enough. Southeastern scored yet another touchdown, bringing the final score to 29-9. Northwestern had 384 total yards, 282 in the air, and 102 on the ground. The Rangers will take the weekend off before facing off against Langston University on Saturday, October 10th at Ranger Field. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. Thank you, Becky. Now let's take a look at upcoming events on camp, coming up on campus. Theater production Vietnam 101 is going to be held in Herod Hall, Herod Hall Auditorium at 7.30 p.m. on October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Safety Suit Concert will be held at Percival Fieldhouse at 6 p.m. 
Last but not least, this semester's Fall Blood Drive will be on October 7th and 8th from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. in the Student Center. And don't forget to vote for Ranger Royalty this Monday and Tuesday. Becky, aren't you running? Yes, I am running um, along with Nina Schultz, Ashlyn Fry, and Brooke Butler. And what about the men? Are they who is going to be um, Ranger? Well, team? there's one. one. <laughs> Charlie Burns. Oh, okay. Nobody else did, um, signed up. So, so he is automatically our Ranger He's King? He's automatically our Ranger King. Very good. Mm -hmm. This is going to do it for us today. We'll see you next week.